come back over towards A. They've taken the holes, they're moving their way through them. Shados does send his Trailblazer through to open up that door as Nat swings it open. And now Mech, they can approach this A site from so many different sides, and that just puts pressure on Dinks in particular, and now you have to look to the setup inside of the site. It's just one player of SSK trying to do his best to hold on, but it's just relentless from Mech. It's an absolute massacre. Oh, you know what? That's okay. even worse. That's <laughs> even worse. I would rather have my feet to work that one with, but it's going to be a yet another A push here, and as they try and make their way on, now there were kills, now there's a response, now there's numbers are waiting here for Na'Vi, Dinko, and this is what they're looking for, and yeah. this is what we wanted was the full buy from them, and now that they have it, it puts Nats in a 1v2 situation, and this is the agent that Nats made himself famous on, this is his opportunity to traverse the site, we know he will get away with it, majority yeah, we, were trying, we were trying, we were trying, we were trying really desperately, <laughs> speaking of trying desperately, it looks like the desperate hush on the side is going to be shut down by Dinks. There he is, the Cypher, and he had the Cypher Cage out real quick, but they weren't following in for the trades. But guess who's there for the trades? It's Duno, and I love this. They're holding the crosses really well. This is not a map that we thought they'd look comfortable on, but they're playing it really well. Yeah, they're playing solid right now. That's a big step up there from Duno, and it's giving them a real chance, but again, Nats thrust into the clutch. If there is a player to win these, it would be Nats. Viper that is not getting planned. destroyed. For them to lose that one, hey, Na'Vi picking and prodding well. well Dinks in an awkward spot, luckily has his teammate, and they've taken the first two kills of play. So Mech tried to charge up middle, and unfortunately for them, they have lost two of their attacking side. And this puts Mech into a very difficult position, because now you have to recover a three versus five with so much time left on the clock and Deflin and Shados, two players that can really help you get into those sites, are now down. You've lost the flashes, you've lost Depo's ability to try and crack it open with the jet. This becomes very hard now for Mech to find some space. Or oh, Mech. I'd seen Chronicle on it in the previous Team Liquid game and for this particular round now, Redgar being in no 1v4, it doesn't seem very possible. 30 seconds, plant very unlikely. I want to highlight the fact that Chronicle had just a massive game against Team Liquid. He had dropped 28 kills. He had a cast, which for those who don't know why I really hype up cast, it stands for kills, assist, survival, and it gives you an indication as to mm. how consistent a player is over multiple. As well, Defo, close quarters. No. The operator comes around the back and it's got one. It's do no down. And for Na'Vi, that is a timing that has cost them a big player, but there's still two players in sight. Na'Vi with two holding. We'll see if they can get this one done. Dink's the first player to step up, and now it's Cloud's yeah, turn. Just one for one on both of those players, and that has resulted in the equilibrium of a 2v2. They've crossed to the site to put the spike down, and SSK will start to make his way back in from the arches. JD, the wall comes down, and that reveals him. Nats in with a headshot, turns, can't find the follow-up, and now it's just Redcar. SSK with the updraft Ooh. down, hits the uh, shot. So Quick reaction. can get something done, but Dink's play you just mentioned, a little bit more aggressive this time around. Oh. He might actually put some pressure onto them. It's Shados with the headshot. Dink's goes down, and a fantastic start to the round here for Mech. It was great as well because Shados was shut down so quickly. We saw the knife come out and meant that he wasn't able to do what he was looking for. Speaking of flashes, and a rain out on the site now because SSK is the only one, and my God, as he flashes and dashes, he'll get the kill, and he goes for yet another short-range engagements. Is that Defo's playground? No. Nah. We criticised him on ascent, and even in the earlier the parts of this half was that they rotate way too quickly. They let them give the site up and... Of course, then it keeps it wide open for Mech, and they don't mind rotating left, right, and center, but now Cave is going to be where they dwell. And with SSK having the long-range engagement, this is going to be his forte. He'll tap the spike. They know that this is a bait-and-switch, and with those rendezvous nearby, he could just teleport in and stop it when he wants. No yeah, well, that defuse is on nearly over half, but Shados with the headshot. Hunter Shui now locked his position on SSK. We'll see if Mech can get in here. They have to try and limit the casualties. They have to try and remove both of these players in the site very quickly. They're going through. SSK He's able to deal with the first. Still untraded right now. 20 seconds. That spike down. Quick shot from right guard in the swing out. We're now at the 4v3. For 15 seconds, time is a ticking right now for Mech, and they have to get in towards the site. And they still have to deal with the site players. You've still got to deal with Dinks, and he's got one. Nats trades him out, but six seconds left. Spike not picked up. There's not enough time to win it. They have to play for elimination. And that is not going to happen. It's the round done. Navi have with the advantage that Mech have been able to glean and the map control they've got, they can slow this one down, Jess. They feel pretty comfortable right now with over a minute left. Well, time does a tick, and generally Mech 
like to use that to their advantage. Do no lurking around in the water. He'll get fish out of water very quick. And as JD moves on in as well, those are nice shots. What can happen now is they play for the retake. Look at the utility on both sides here. And we have an ultimate on Dings if he wanted to throw that into the mix as well. Need to get near a body for that to be able to happen. And of course, a flash still in the hand of Shados. For those who know I'm Australian, they know that I say it very, very well. So next time we see an ulti, one ult all the way, <laughs> I have to give you a little bit of a rendition as to what that is. Oh, wonky one now. Dings in the sight, but Shados is starting to deal with him. The sound and noise of the water as he crosses on by, but that time is ticking. He's trying to figure out where he is. And look at the peek out from Shados. Isn't that Shados allow for that first pick to go out? Things will look better for them, and this is what we need, conviction here on the first round. Oh, Shados, good double kill. SSK and Juno down. Jenny able to trade out for one, but it's not enough firepower right now for Na'Vi. They're down in the 2v4. They have a lot of recovering to do in this round. Cloud at least hits a bone-shaking headshot onto Chronicle, but it's just one as he goes down quickly after. Just thinks now into the clutch. 1v3 total has taken significant damages as the walking wounded right now with a minute five. Peek out from Defo, Sheriff just needs well, one shot. As he makes it rain and he lets them know his position, he's just waiting for the rest of Mech to be able to crunch over and get this retake happening. Oh, they're in the side deep here in RV. For Mech to try and force them out of this, it's going to be very difficult to even get close to it. Flash goes through, getting in a good position, transfers for both. Shados and Defo both go down, and now Chronicle. It's all about the damage you can find the way in here, but not much else going to be found for Mech. Cats hangs around, but Na'Vi through the double door, trying to split the safe site with 40 seconds left. They start to make their way through. Nats currently suppressed down on the site. With that wall up, he actually can't really get too much done, but luckily he's able to come in with two, and that's Cloud and JD both down. Right guy able to reveal his opponent as SSK will hit the deck, and now it's just Duno and Dinks will have to recover a 2v4. You do not envy this position, but they have to sort of weasel their way through to this. Oh, let's see how they do it, but Mech are in a good position just to close this one out for the retake. I love that they've just waited for them to plan as well. They've said, okay, get on the yeah. side, do your thing. Let us recollect. Let us get to do these crossfire positions. Let us take every power position out of your hands and crush you bit by bit. And yeah. that's exactly what they were able to do there. And that's the sign of a team like Mech, who, let us not forget, has been together hands. since We want to see whether or not the damage can be dealt. We've seen in the back side what Defo did with his blade storm. We added it to the Wiftage. Will SSK join that montage that we are building here? Ryan's whiffs of the day. And for the moment, he's looking to make damage with it, but Ooh. instead it's going to be JD to make the entry. Yeah, Shadis goes down, but look at that rotation. Red guys got able to, to get back into play, and Chronicles taking the first of play. So Mech currently stand with the advantage into the retake. They've got to deal with three players. One of them softened up. SSK down low. They are in post plants. It's not the most solid post by position. In fact, they're a little bit more advanced inside of the site. They're trapped right now. And Duno is the fight or flight, but he sticked down. He fights and right guard round is a new round. It's a new opportunity. And speaking of Defo, he's creating his own. He moves up, comes out the flash, and as he gives away his position, somehow, some way, he's not able to capitalize. And JD, God, he's had a good past five rounds. Yeah, that's a great start to the round. That's a great opportunity here for Na'Vi. They have to capitalize upon it. They're trying to neutralize Chronicle up in towards the nest. They have haven't been able to force him out. He's still up there, and that's going to cost him. Chronicle with the double, and he's still around. He wants more. He's an absolute berserker right now as he's looking for a third. Luckily, they'll start to back away, but with those two kills, it, it stifled the attack entirely, and Red Guard, his rotation over, has found himself that impact kill. So now we're looking to Duno and JD, who have lost all that potency, all that aggression that they had at the start of the round, and they don't even have the map control to play with for this time being. 45 seconds for Na'Vi to figure out the Enigma code that is Mech. We see the tour de, tour de Force has popped over towards mid as well. If they go for the rotate, they will be walking into a line of sight of absolute domination that Chronicle is waiting to bestow upon them. I was surprised that he popped it given the numbers revenge, given the time advantage at the time upon which he had pulled it. But this is the kind of respect that's exactly what we're seeing here. Defo confirmed in that position. We know he loves to play it, but Chronicle, he hasn't moved up that aggressively before. And Na'Vi, they pay the price as a result of not being quite ready for it. And oh no, they've lost their leading man. They've lost their space maker here, Dinko. Yeah, and that's a bit of a problem for Na'Vi because Nats is hunting them down. And like a predator, he will find his prey. 
Makes quick work of him as well. And that's a follow-up player down for Na'Vi. What options are left on the table for them? Under a minute left. They've lost their prong towards A. They don't know if Nats has continued to push forward, so they can't go back there. Instead, they have to think about going into mid, but Nats has repositioned towards the double door. So he's in a very good position to find yet another kill and deliver more impact. And if he finds this, this should be round done. Na'Vi lost another, and now we're looking to do no on JD. And a two versus four recovery, it's just not happening. Nats is just having a round. He's decided this one's his, and now Duno left in a one versus four. He may try, but winning this round is going to be incredibly difficult. Spike's nowhere near him, time is limited, and Nats finally will be removed from plight. But Duno has a lot more work to do, and not a lot of time to do it, Jess. I'm glad that he's giving it a go because out of Two any games man, out of the way. Now they've just got to play mech and then the next game, the last game of play is FPX. So let's see if Na'Vi can stay alive on this one. They charge the double door. They charge into Chronicle. And he has been granted anchoring the site, but this time will not stay alive for long. That's able to come in with one and now has to try and back away. He won't get away with his life. So Na'Vi have the advantage, Jess. We know how potent the retakes here from Mech have been. Defo even more potent when he's got the operator in his hand. This is match point. The fact that Na'Vi went in with such gusto, that is a damaging prospect for them because they have sight, but Spike is down. It's not planted when I make that statement. And that camera, wow, that was a beautiful one. Gives a lot of intel over towards the attacking side here, but it's not enough. And Shados, he will almost certainly help put the nail in the coffin. That is this map, is this series here, Dinko, unless we could see a beautiful, Beautiful clutch here from SSK. Yeah, he would need an absolute incredible highlight moment. And Defo so 